Okay. Hello you all amateur etymologist. Welcome to this 19th session of word power medici. Part 1 of this book is completed with session 18. Now this part 2 will be from today's session that is 19 to session 38. So let us get started with today's session where we will discuss ideas. Well let me tell you in short, today's topic is on verbs. And the great thing about verb is, the richer and more extensive your vocabulary of verbs, the more accurately and expressively you can communicate your understanding of actions, reactions, attitudes and emotions. Let's be specific. How to talk about actions? The first part is playing it down. Let us have an example first. Suppose when your son understandably expects praise, mentions the 80% marks he scored in his school exams, you respond callously or uh, let's say without any caring. Is that the best you can do? What stopped you from getting 90% marks? So here you disparage his accomplishments. So briefly, disparage means belittle or playing it down. So the next part, playing it safe. Let's take another example. You are in office meeting and your boss asked you to take a stand on certain issue, but you don't have the courage to, to, to be either definitely for or against. So what you do is you equivocate. In short, you what does equivocate mean is uh, purposely talk in such a way as to be vague and misleading. So that is our second part. To the third, enjoying the little things. Uh, have you ever had a plate of Golgappa or Bani Puri which is sweet and hot flavor and is so deliciously spicy that you don't want to lose that taste from your taste buds? Uh, now notice the example I have used. I have not spoken of a food that satisfies uh, ravenous hunger. This would offer quite a different, perhaps more lasting and memorable type of enjoyment. How do such things affect you? They titillate you. So titillate means stimulate pleasurably. Moving to the fourth part, uh, a hero worship. Uh, let's have an example again. Uh, you virtually worship your teacher from coaching classes that you go. Uh, you express your admiration in lavish flattery. You praise her in such expressive terms that she appears devoid of all human frailty. Here. What you do is uh, you adulate her. Simply, adulate means worship flatter fulsomely. Just to take a note, the word fulsome does not mean despite its appearance as fully or completely, but rather offensive because of excessiveness or insincerity, often in reference to the compliments, praise, admiration, or flattery. To the fifth verb, accentuating the negative. What does the doctor say to you if you have high blood sugar level? No sweets, no pastries, no chocolate cake, no ice cream. Your moral dropping lower and lower as each favorite goodie is placed on the forbidden list. What in one word is the doctor doing? The doctor is prescribing harmful items in your diet. In short, proscribe means prohibit. To the sixth verb, accentuating the affirmative. You have run out of cash and you plan to go to the ATM to make a withdrawal. Then, uh, then unexpectedly you discover a 500 rupees note you secretly kept in your desk drawer few months ago. So uh, you find obvious a trip to the ATM. So, so what obvious means is preclude or prevent. Seventh verb, playing it wrong. There is one book on psychoanalysis in, uh, in which author talks about neurotic people who unconsciously wish to fail. In business interviews, they say exactly the wrong words, they do exactly the wrong things. They seem intent on ensuring failure in every possible way, though consciously they are trying their best to court success. What effect does such a neurotic tendency have is it militates against success. So militate means work against. The next one, playing it dirty. Let's say you spread an unpleasant story that you know will blacken someone's reputation. Here you malign that person. So malign means spread malicious rumors about. To the ninth one, giving the benefit of doubt. 
Your child Chintu has hit the neighbor's child entirely without provocation, but you are forced to admit. But after all, but after all, you think tomorrow the kid will, with equal lack of provocation, probably hit Chintu. Here, you condone Chintu's behavior. Thus, condone means to to overlook or forgive a transgression. Now to the last one, changing hostility. Um, unwittingly, you have done something that has aroused anger and resentment in your best friend. You had no desire to hurt him, yet the, yet he makes it obvious that he feels pretty bitter about the whole situation. His friendship is valuable to you, and you wish to restore yourself in his good graces. What do you do? You try to placate him. Now, like it in short means changing hostility to friendliness. So uh, I know today's session has been a lengthy one, but hey, look at the brighter side. We learned ten new verbs today. Now um, we will talk about the origin and some derivations in upcoming session, upcoming next four sessions. That is till session twenty-three. So stay tuned for more etymology. Thank you for watching.